Welcome back to Anderson Smoke Show. Today, we've got a spiral smoked ham that we're gonna double smoke and we're gonna glaze with my homemade glaze recipe. This thing is gonna be kick ass. Stick around and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. If you're new here, my name is Andrew and I'm an engineer. So everything you see here at Anderson Smoke Show is gonna be technical and to the point, including all the steps in making this killer ham. Now let's get started. All right, so I've got a 13 pound spiral cut smoked ham. These are already fully cooked. Just pulled it out of the refrigerator, rinsed it off really quickly and pat dried it, placed it on this wire rack. What I wanna do is just throw it on the smoker. I've got my char griller Gravity 980 set to the lowest temperature possible, it's 200 degrees. I'm gonna run this thing for about half hour, just like this. Just gonna let it bathe in some smoke and then we're gonna pull it out and do a little bit more prep. Enough talking, let's get it on the smoker. When it comes to lighting my charcoal grills, including this Char Griller Gravity 980, my offset, or even my Weber kettle, there's one tool that has changed the game, and that is my Grill Blazers grill gun. I've got a link down in the description, and for you, I'll give you 10% off. You go to that link, click it, it'll take you right to their website, and you will receive 10% off. This Grill Blazers grill gun, it speeds up the process of getting my grill lit. I've got plenty of things going on. I've got side dishes going. I've got food prep. I don't have time to mess with the charcoal. So I use my grill gun. I've got it hooked up to a 20 pound propane tank. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use. I'm gonna turn the red knob. You hear the gas, a couple strikes of the igniter, and there we go. We've got fire. I can adjust the flame here using this knob. You can turn it up or down, or there's also a trigger here on the handle where I can do it as well. Now let's get this Char Griller Gravity 980 fired up for this ham. So using a wire rack is great because it makes it so much easier to transport. I'll pick this up, set it right here in the middle, just like so. So we're going to go a half hour at 200 degrees. I've got this loaded up with some lump charcoal and some apple wood. We used our Grill Blazers grill gun to get that fire started fast so that we could get this ham on as quickly as possible. We've got guests coming over for dinner tonight, and I don't want it to be late. Half hour in the smoke. See you in a bit. All right, so we had this ham in the grill for a half hour, hitting it with smoke at 200 degrees. I pulled it out, and that's the nice thing about the wire rack is it makes it easy to transport it. We don't physically have to pick the ham itself up. It's time to get it seasoned, and it's time to get it ready to get back into the smoker. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of yellow mustard and just a tiny, tiny bit of yellow mustard as a binder. And I'm just doing this so that the rub has something to stick to. So with one glove here, I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow mustard on. Get some here on the back side. Now, I've used oil in the past, I've used duck fat, I've used all kinds of things. Today I decided to go with the mustard because I'm changing things up this year with my ham. I'm going to try and experiment a little bit more than I normally do. So I've got some of my Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub. I like this one, it's a great all-purpose. It's got a little bit of sweet to it, but it's a great all-purpose rub. And I'm just going to sprinkle this on here pretty thick. Now mind you, it is a little windy today, so I have to be careful with the spice or it's gonna go everywhere, like it is right now. All right, so it's pretty well seasoned now with that Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub. Now I got some maraschino cherries and I took some toothpicks and I cut the toothpicks in half because I don't really want a lot of toothpicks sticking out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the toothpick through a maraschino cherry, like so, and I'm going to stick that into the ham. Then I'm going to grab a pineapple ring and I'm gonna hang the pineapple ring just like so. And I'm gonna put these all over the ham makes it look pretty cool to be honest with you. 
And I'm gonna put as many of these on here as I can, but I still wanna leave a little bit of surface area for the smoke to penetrate the ham and get on the surface here. Now, before we return it into the grill, I've got a deep foil pan here. I'm gonna transfer the ham into this pan because in a bit we will be braising it with some liquids and tenting it up with foil. Part of the reason why I didn't want super long toothpicks because it would tear the foil. Now I have to get in here and I need to pick this ham up carefully and get it into this foil pan. Now that didn't go too bad. Now let's get it over to the grill. All right, we're gonna get this back in. We bumped the smoker up to 225 degrees. I'm gonna get this ham in here just like so. Right back in the center, we're gonna get the lid closed. We're gonna run this for about the next two hours at 225 degrees, uncovered, just like that. When we come back out next time, we will be braising it, tenting it up with foil, and getting it super tender and super moist. We'll see you in a bit. We've had it smoking at 225 degrees in this pan, seasoned up with the pineapples and the cherries on it for two hours. It's time to braise it. So I've got some Dr. Pepper, some orange juice, and some teriyaki sauce that we're gonna pour over the top of this ham. We're gonna get it wrapped up in foil and it's gonna braise until it reaches 135 degrees. So let's go ahead, get to braising. So I'm gonna start with the Dr. Pepper. We need one cup of Dr. Pepper. I got my nice little measuring cup here. Let the foam settle here for a second. So we got the one cup of Dr. Pepper and I'm just going to pour that slowly over the top so that it runs down all over that ham. And I can tell you what, the color on this looks great. Everything looks great. Now we need a half a cup of teriyaki sauce. Probably should have removed that little safety cap. Half cup teriyaki sauce. We're gonna do the same, just slowly drizzle this over the top. I was thinking about it, pineapple on the ham. What are your thoughts on ham and pineapple pizza? Leave it in the comments. And a cup of orange juice. And I'm gonna save the other half cup for the glaze that we're gonna be making to put on this ham. Same thing, we're gonna pour this over. All right, we kicked the grill up to 275 degrees. Now I've got some heavy duty foil and I wanna cover this ham. I've got a, I've got a probe in it. We're looking for about 135 degrees. You wanna pull the ham when it's at 140, but we're gonna glaze it before we actually pull it. So I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna have to pull this out just a little bit. And you wanna get as tight of a seal on this pan with the foil as you possibly can because the only way to really braise this is to keep all that moisture in there, keep it nice and tight in there. And just for good measure, I'm gonna do one more in the opposite direction. All right, get the lid closed and we're just gonna watch temperature. Hopefully it's about another hour, hour and a half or so and then it'll be about ready to glaze. Just keep an eye on the temperature. Like I said, we're looking for about 135 degrees. See you then. Just check the ham. We're at 135 degrees internal temperature. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out. There is a lot of juice in the bottom. Hopefully you'll be able to see it here. What you're gonna need to do is drain that juice off because we've got a glaze. We're gonna to wanna to get the glaze on it, get it back on the grill to set it up. So I'm gonna drain the juice out here and uh, we'll get the glaze on here in just a moment. So we pulled the ham out of the smoker. It took all of the juices out because we really don't need any of that any longer. I have a glaze, a homemade glaze that I made, put a recipe down in the description. Basically now I just wanna drizzle that all over the ham. 
We're gonna get it back onto the smoker for a few minutes for it to set up, and it'll be time to try. Got the glaze on the ham now. We're just gonna get it back into the smoker for about five to 10 minutes, and all we're looking is for that glaze to set up, thicken up, and it'll be time to try the ham. So we pulled the ham out of the smoker. The glaze is set up. There's still some juices in the pan. That's why I've got my label here to just kind of drizzle the juices and the glaze back on. To be honest with you, it smells delicious, but I haven't tried it yet. Typically, I would pull it out of the pan. I'd get it out on the cutting board, take some thumbnail shots, but I've got people here for dinner and I want to get this in. So I'm going to try it here from the pan. I've got some pieces right here. I'm just going to take my knife, try a slice right here. It's tender, it's sweet, it's fruity, and the glaze, honestly, is pretty dang good. Changed a few things up this year, and I'm really happy with the results. If you're looking for su suggestions or recipes for yourself for your Christmas ham, I suggest trying this out with this method and this glaze. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Until then, I'll see you next time at Anderson Smoke Show.